My name is Zhe, and I'm a developer working with Gerard and Arden at Embo EBI. Today, I'm going to talk about um, EM validation at EMDB. So here are two plots. On the left, it shows the map released per year. And on the right, it gives the cumulative number of maps released so far. Um, currently, we have 13,000 maps. Um, even during the COVID-19 lockdown, the EM community keep a good pace depositing data into EMDB. So as such a lot of data coming to us, what kind of validation EMDB provide is a key point to our users. That is also what I want to talk about today. Um, EMDB currently has a package called Validation Analysis, VA for short. Uh, it provides extensive information to help you assess the quality of map or tomogram and model and their fit. So we have three major classes, map visualization, map analysis, map model fit. So each EMDB entry has its own validation analysis page. During the deposition, the VA package is serving as the backend program to produce the, this data to generate the map and map model related to validation report. Um, you may remember that we have a purely web-based visualization which called visual analysis. It contains various web components which offers images, graphs to serve the fundamental validation purpose. Um, however, the, the dependencies limit, it, uh, limit the reusability and, and the ability of distribution of the package. So now that the new validation analysis has, has been rebuilt to overcome these problems and being more flexible and expandable. Um, at the same time, we also provide an upgraded version of the web page to show the VA result. But CrowEM field is going um, through rapid development. The validation report needs to be based on robust, proven, and, and well-accepted misers. Therefore, um, they will always lag behind the cutting edge of the field. Uh, but as highlighted in the WWPDB EM validation meeting, there is a need to showcase and apply this cutting edge method in order to gain more experience with them. Um, because of this, we have a um, validation analysis beta page which including all recently implemented methods that are still in use. Um, after the component that have gone through some testing and um, community input, and those components will go into the VA page, which integrated uh, with the EMDB entry page. And in the end, those components after vetted and approved by the WWPDB and EM validation task force will go into the validation report. So what do we have currently in the validation analysis? In the map visualization area, we have orthogonal projections, center slides, largest variance, orthogonal surface views. And we also have some newly created images like orthogonal max value projection and the orthogonal max value projection in false color and also a Sogno standard deviation projection with its false colored images. And those false colored images are inspired by light microscope images. Um, so this allow visual assessment of internal details with which you can check if particle exists in the map, if any mask has been applied and some internal details checking. So for, for those atoms with both font, uh, we, we have them for both primary map and raw map. Here primary map is defined as the map deposited by the author and the raw map is an average map calculated based on two half maps. And those components, so we, we will be waiting for more input from the community to decide if go to the validation report or not. So in map analysis, the first one is the voxel value distribution. It shows the distribution of the voxel value with certain map value and the position of the recommended control level. So a spike in this graph around zero 
usually in the case that the volume has been masked. Masking is frequently used to remove the background noise from the EM volume, and this is quite normal. Uh, but uh, the interpretation of the map may be different with knowledge about any masking. And masks deposition are not mandatory in EMDB, but it will be great if you could um, deposit the related mask and a half maps while you are depositing your entries so that people will benefit from using them and, in, and doing all kinds of analysis. And if two half maps are provided, then we give both curves in the same plot. Um, blue curve here is for primary map and the orange curve here for raw map. So the second one is the volume estimate. And this plot shows how the enclosed volume varies with the contour level. Uh, the specif this spe specified contour level is shown as the vertical line here. And the intersection between the vertical line and the curve gives the enclosed surface at, um, at the given threshold. But the contour level provided by the author may not correspond to the estimated volume. So that indicates um, sometimes if we have this horizontal line, those three lines may not intersect at the same point. So the third one is the rotationally average power spectrum, uh, reps for short. It gives intensity on a logarithmic scale versus spatial frequency. This plot may provide insight into the image processing performed in terms of um, CTF correction, B-factor correction, filtering, and masking. Reps plot currently only calculate for cubic volumes. So the last one is the FRC plot. It shows the relationship between the cross-correlation and the spatial frequency of the shells. It is the most commonly used method to determine the resolution of the EM maps. Um, so here we have three criterions of, to determine the resolution. One is the half bit and the 0 0.143 and the 0 0.5. So if two half maps are given, then we plot both curves, calculate and also deposit FRC. So in the map model fit area, the first one is the map model overlay images. So this images gave the, the map showing in yellow and the model in blue overlaid together. And then in the case where the model has symmetry information, we will create the assemble and then put it together with the map. Uh, for each model fitting the map, an, automic, um, an atom inclusion graph is shown. So the atom inclusion graph displays the fraction of atoms that are inside the map at a given contour level. Um, so we have two curves. One is for the backbone, and the other one is for the full atoms. So for atom inclusion score below 40%, then we should be careful and that we're to further investigate or sometimes when you have a really high value for atom inclusion, that's also need to be checked. And the second one is the, um, the residue inclusion plot. Here, this plot gives um, the residue, the percentage of that residue inside the density map or outside the density map at corresponding contour level. And with those, value, those values, we use that to color the model so that you can have a direct feeling which part fit, fitting well into the density and which part is not. And the top bar here shows the residue inclusion score per chain. Um, then this one comes to the Q-score. So Q-score was developed by uh, Greg Pentelli from Stanford. So as what you will give you more information later and I will not expand it too much here. So, but similar as our residue inclusion areas. So we use Q-score um, at the residue level and then here each point to represent the Q-score of that specific residue. And here are models colored by the Q-score. And this top bar shows the Q-score of each chain. 
So the last part uh, here, we do a sanity check of point symmetry. Uh, we are using ProShade. Uh, it was developed by Micha, uh, who was um, a PhD student formerly with Garib in MRC MMB. So um, in, in this ProShade calculation, we produce three different tables. The first one is the, the symmetry table, which gives determined symmetry. And then the second one is the symmetry element information, where you can check um, the detailed information of each symmetric element. And the last table is alternative symmetry table, which gave other potential symmetry information. Um, so that's currently all the components we have in the web page for validation analysis so far. Um, but at the same time, in the backend program, uh, we also have other metrics that have been integrated into the into the package, like smoke score, CCC score, and map model FRC, EM ringer, and local resolution calculation. But we do have not. Uh, corresponding web component to visualize those data yet. So that will be our next step in the next year. So additionally, beside our current FRC and tilt pair validation server, uh, we are also constructing several other servers. That includes the 3D FRC server, which collaborates uh, with Dimitri's group in SOC Institute and also map model FRC server, the local resolution, and 3D Strudo score server. Um, so regarding the availability for validation analysis, there are mainly three places where you can access the validation analysis. First, it will be available in the new EMDB web page currently in beta. And the servers, which I just mentioned, will also be there next year. And second, you will be finding the validation analysis result in the WWPDB validation pipeline, and also from the report and the servers. And that will be available also next year. So the source code um, of VA will be distributed through CCPEM. Mm, so VA is written by Python and compatible with both Python 2 and 3. So for, uh, for Python side, we use 10p MRC file and MDA and CCTBX for some IO and map, map manipulations. Besides those, we also use some other commonly used package from Python like NumPy, SetPy. And the pre-release version of VA will soon officially available on PyPy. So in the end, I would like to thank EMDB Empire and PDBE team, and also thanks to EM Validation Network collaborators um, like Maya Elena's group from Berbeck and Martin's group in CCPEM, and Peter's team from Francis Craig Institute, Gar Rape's group from MRC MMB, and Alan's group from University of Manchester. And also thanks to the software support from Phoenix team and Greg from Stanford for supporting the Q-score calculation um, and the 3D FRC support from Dimitri's group in Saki Institute. And, in, and also thank you for your attention.